Darrell Jash Johnson, Gospel Herald, CitySportsReport.com. It is my esteemed honor to be here with uh, Ruth Morrison, a uh, former beat writer for the New York Beacon, which is a paper I write for now, and, and the founder of uh, the, the award-winning cable television series, What's the 411? Uh, how are you doing today? I am great. I'm great. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Thank you very much. Happy New Year, by the way. Happy New Year uh, to you as well. Uh, first question I want to ask you, 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 you used to be a beat writer uh, covering the New York Knicks. What was li that like for you as an African-American woman uh, to cover a team like the New York Knicks? Wow. You know what? That was an, an amazing experience and one that I will never, ever forget. Um, you know, because I was one of three women who covered um, the New York Knicks on a regular basis. And, um, you know, it was interesting because when I would tell people that I was covering the Knicks, they were like, oh, my God, you're in the, my, and you're in the locker room? <laughs> and I would say, well, yeah, you know, I'm there. I'm, I'm doing my job. And, um, you know, but it, it was a really great time. It was. It was an excellent time. What are, what are some of your fondest memories from that time that you covered the Knicks, that five-year period you were there? Wow. Um, when they won the Eastern Conference Championships? And being on the floor, you know, after the game was over and all the confetti was coming down from the ceiling and the, the I mean, the roar from the crowd, it was just so loud and the vibrations, I mean, that's, you know, it's like I almost can feel it right now. I mean, that's, it was really... So let's talk about what's the 411 uh, show that you still uh, produce. Uh, you're the founder. What was your motivation to, to start the company and start doing that? Well, you know what is interesting because um, it was a couple of things. One, um, when I got the idea, I was developing the city of New York's cable TV network. So I developed that network and launched it from conception. It's a five channel cable television network. And it was during a time when there was a whole lot of conversation going on about, well, we're moving into a 500 channel world. And I was like, well, if there's going to be 500 channels, there's going to be need for content. So I knew then that I wanted to be an independent television producer to produce content. But over time, I realized that, well, there was a need for a show like What's the 411 because we didn't have as many, um, you know, um, black people on TV in a role where they could sit down and talk about who they are beyond just being an artist. Who are they as people? So that's the reason why, you know, I decided, well, you know what, I'm going to, um, you know, create this, you know, entertainment and lifestyle. Um, well, actually, at that time, an entertainment show. Yeah. So who was the first uh, big interview that you guys landed with What's the 411? Well, you know what, actually, our very first interview was with um, Freedom Williams. And he had a very a huge hit at the time, so I considered him to be, you know, a big star. But the A-list actor was Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy, oh my God, it was like wow. When we got the, that opportunity, it was like, I'm like, okay, well, we're on our way now. Yeah. So who has who has been some of the, some of the your favorite guests on the show? Big big A-list or not? Wow. You know, that's really interesting because there have been some standouts, you know. Um, let's see, um, Eddie Griffin, act, he's a comedian. You know, that was my one of my first interviews. And I was so nervous. And when that interview was over, he came from the other side and sat in my lap. <laughs> you know? So, I mean, I'll never forget that story. And then... Um, Gosh, you know, um, you know, we interviewed Queen Latifah, which was a really interesting, um, you know, interview. Um, and uh, let's see, um, Cuba Gooding Jr. was really good. You know, Angela Bassett. Um, you know, it was interesting because when we interviewed um, Angelina Jolie, you know, she really appeared to be so pale. And that was surprising because every time I saw a photo of her, she, she was always um, like she had been in the sun. She had a tan or something. And to see her to be so pale, I was like, wow, this is really, you know, strange, you know. But, um, but she was so gracious, you know, um, as was her father. 
actually. We interviewed him, um, you know, at, at one point. Um, Liam Neeson, you know, that was a good interview. And, I mean, I could go on and on, but, yeah, I don't, yeah. Tell us a little bit about your, your newest venture. What's the 411 Sports? Well, you know what? I am so proud to um, be able to take, you know, my journey from being a reporter to now covering for my own media company, um, you know, sports. So, and it's been great. I mean, we have um, credentials to cover the Brooklyn Nets. We've covered the Knicks. Um, we covered the Giants. Um, this, you well know, we were at the U.S. Open this year, which was really, really great. And um, in addition to interviewing the, um, you know, getting, you know, um, time with some of the, you know, the players, the tennis um, players, um, we also interviewed um, D.A. Abrams, who um, is the um, chief um, diversity officer for um, the U.S. Tennis Association. And, you know, this year, um, it's our third year that we had the, um, our 25 most interesting people. So with the 25 most interesting people of 2014, and D.A. Abrams, you know, was on that list. And uh, Michael Strahan topped the list. He was number one. And we interviewed him last, you know, um, in 2014 um, at the, um, the Super Bowl because, you know, it was here in New York last year. And Richard Sherman was on the list as well because he was, you know, we interviewed him. And everybody who was on that list basically are people that, you know, we interviewed throughout 2014. So we've had a really great run, you know. You certainly have. So what can we expect from What's the 411 and What's the 411 Sports in 2015? Wow, that's an excellent question. Well, you know, certainly, you know, more, um, you know, great interviews, lots of conversation about things that are going on in sports and um, as well as entertainment um, because of the entertainment side of things we will be talking as well. And more, um, you know, um, guests like you. We're going to have you on the show, you know, giving your perspective about um, what you see, you know, happening, you know, in the sports area. So, yeah. So, so to the people out there who are not familiar with What's the 411, let them know where they could find uh, both, both What's the 411, What's the 411 Sports as well, so that when I'm on it, you guys can watch that too. Yeah, well, you know what? You can always, um, what I always say to people, subscribe to our YouTube channels. I mean, we are on Verizon um, Files citywide and um, um, Cablevision, Time Warner, RCN, you know, but if you subscribe to our YouTube channels, 411 Sports TV and um, What's the 411 TV, you will always know when we have uploaded an interview with someone because Google, well actually YouTube, well Google does own YouTube, will send you an alert by email letting you know we just uploaded a new video. So you will, they will, anybody who does that, they are going to be in the know of everything that we're doing. So definitely subscribe to our YouTube channels. Yeah. All right, well, we certainly need to get going because there's a basketball game that's going to start pretty soon behind us. Uh, but it was a pleasure talking to you, and we look forward to uh, doing this again in the near future. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you.